See, that's why uh, the fucking shit I'm hearing nowadays ain't nothing but, but the shit to me. That's a man right there. Some say I'm ill-mannered. Some a lot of people don't like that, do you? Someone put the O in country was wrote by Hank Third, sold by Shooter Union, so he comes back with the cunt in country to dig the diction. My grant is not going to lose one day. He's sitting there playing basketball right now, bro. I'm pretty sure. Or I'm blind as fuck. My rent, that $2 million contract, it won't take 10000 of that to make that kid shut up. I'd take an ass with him for fucking. <laughs> and to meet John, you can beat me up, John Morant. I want to be able to see you, know what I mean? Make a card out of it, too. A lot of great and shit, that'd be badass. <laughs> That's just how I am, bro, you know what I mean? I'm just, you know, I look at more of the news right now of what's really going on. This one dude passed out at the Wilby's car and shit there and just going through all that shit. And I'm looking at Aaron Rodgers. That's the big question right now, guys. Is he retiring? Going to New York? Fuck no. He's going to play for the Raiders. Derek Carr will be the option. Watch. Mark my words. The, who, who's the wide receiver the Raiders just picked up? That is Aaron Rodgers like this with? Don't worry, I'll wait. Um, watch Morant. Watch it. Watch this shit. Never mind, he's on the bench. Okay, I'll talk. But anyway, yeah. And I think that Josh Allen, I, I was so mad at the Browns picked Baker Mayfield instead of him. I was so mad about that. You don't do that just because of the play. Randy Moss come from Marshall people. DuPont High School that played basically basketball with Jason Williams, White Chocolate. Y'all know all this, right? Our school played these schools. DuPont High School, I mean. You see that? I mean, when you see somebody like that to conduct, you know they're going pro. And when Randy talks, I hate when he says, Yo, you got moss. Remember his son was supposed to moss Alabama? You can't step on the line and be the first one to touch the ball. What kind of fucking rules y'all playing by? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. And the, I'll never forget Auburn not giving a three second runoff and sitting there kicking a field goal, and that's what ended up winning the game. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of fan, my brother is, but they get fucking cheated in every way possible, and they still run away to win. I can't help that. Nick Saban is an evil genius. Look at Jalen Hurts, son, you're blowing the national championship, and you got a kid sitting there saying, I can do it, coach. I can do it, coach. Get in there, Tua. What do you do? You can't coach that shit, guys. What Tom Brady do to the Falcons? Oh, that was paid off. The ball was there. Okay, I got this to say about that. Well, I guess 14 times the ball was, you know, he played it. Not possible. Every time Gronk spikes the ball, what happens? If anybody has any football knowledge here, it loses how much pound of air? And how much was missing in the football? That's kind of fucking odd, isn't it? Enough said right there. Nick Chubb's going to break the record, boys. He's going to be Eric Dickerson's record. I can feel it. If the kid can see, he just said Larry Bird. My son... Is a Larry Bird. Now, you ask me if I had any Larry Bird cards? I got it. It's an Indiana State card right there with the big ring. Look at that shit. That's what I'm talking about, man. He's special. Very special, man. I had a foul in. Gonna be a hell of a game. Watching the basketball game, picking out a movie to watch, and I have to pick this. Got my bitch in it, and one of my favorite actors. You know, I can't believe she was born in Africa. You know, I think it was a synagogue to be precise, but Tom Hardy is, he should win an Oscar for everything he does, especially in Lawless. <laughs> How the fuck is that not possible? When he plays horse. Alright, alright. 
That's a kick-ass movie. And it's a, I, I think it's way better than the original, just like Red Dawn. And I think anything Tom Hardy plays, where he plays the twin mafia brothers, what is that? Uh, shit. Don't take my time. What's it called? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm walking into that hammer and beats your fucking brain down, son. Don't say a word and walk right back. You know what I mean? He, Tom Hardy can act. That, I done sold this one. My buddy bought that the other day. That's Marshall Fox. It's one of Marshall Fox rookies. And he bought this Jason Kidd right here. But I was going to show you that. Bear, uh, what'd you ask me about? Larry Bird. Dude. My dad gave me this in 1996. That's the only college card I have of his, but I got a ton of his uh, rookies and other shit, him and Kevin McHale. You know? Hey, Rachel, how are you doing? Oh, that's nothing. Mona, if you walk in my room, I got them all setting up. I got an autograph, autographed jersey, numbered Nick Chubb in there. It's worth a fucking shit ton of red laser. It's his rookie. It's got his jersey in it. You see what I'm saying? Autographed. And it's numbered. It's number seven of only 25 made. That's the ones you want to get your hands on. Ain't college ball so much better to watch. I can't wait to West Virginia gets back to the Final Four one of these times. We won the national title that year. Y'all know we did. Kentucky had John mm -hmm. Wall, Patrick Patterson, Demarcus Ware, Cousins. That was a dream team. That was like the Fab Five, man. And we beat their ass like there was nothing in the Elite Eight and had to play Duke the next game. And Deshaun Butler busted his knee off the fucking floor. I'll never forget that. Ever. Ever. Yeah, because they're playing their guts out to win a national championship. That's why. You know. All right, Michael. No rush, buddy. You know what I mean? No rush. <coughs> I uh, actually bought a Miles McBride card off the boy off eBay and another, a couple more Giannis rookies. You know what I mean? I said it won't be worth a shit ton. I think Giannis and John Moran is the new, and Luka Doncic is the new face of basketball in the rock. And two of them's for him, you know. The Mavericks are going to be a shitload to handle when you got one scoring 42 and the other one scoring 40. We're not ranking shit. We was ranked, we was 10 and 0 starting out, brother. 10 and 0. Have you watched Eric Stevenson play yet? The kid is phenomenal. I don't know if you watch West Virginia ball, but if you want to know our ranking, we're 17 and 10. We're getting in this year, for sure. And we're, we play tomorrow night, Hugsy's last game. And uh, we just lost to Kansas by two points. Two points. Bug in. That Stevenson kid, though, uh, if you remember Joe Alexander and Pitt Snoggle, remember them? And Gandhi, all them that played. And we had Beeline, all them. Uh, it was just a team. Of, and white boys tore it up that year. We went all the way to Sweet 16 past that. West Virginia made the tournament for 19 years in a row. That's not easy to do. You know, Jerry West ain't the fucking logo for nothing, people. When you look at the NBA and you see that white logo, that's Jerry West. Not Michael Jordan. Never had a three-point line. Lost by two points in 1947 to uh, California, 54-52. There's a three-point line. We were on that game by 100 points. We had Hot Rod Hunley and Jerry West. They could shoot the ball from the whole fucking court. No joke. West Virginia's been robbed by national title in 1988. Lou Holtz, 
born and raised in West Virginia. Coaches Notre Dame. Who remembers this one? Who's the quarterback for West Virginia? Just Major Harris. Would have went on probably to be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL I had ever seen. Black quarterbacks at that time. Uh, got, was winning. He got hurt at halftime. We lost that game. National Championship against Notre Dame, 1988. Then 2007 rolls around. I really don't want to talk about. Because I'm alert and alive for that. And I'm alert and alive for the Cleveland Indians getting robbed by the Florida Marlins and the fucking Cubs. The Cubs was definitely a robbery. Big robbery. I know y'all have to agree with me on that. LeBron James, the first time in NBA history, comes back and beats Steph Curry. Am I wrong? They're not going to call Cleveland title town. Not Cleveland, of all cities. If the Indians win that World Series, we're fucking title town. Because, well, the basketball team just won, and our baseball team. Now all the Browns have to do is, you know what I mean, in Kansas City, Cheated them. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Helmet, the helmet, fucking all day long didn't get called. You wonder why the guy uh, Higgins struggles? If you are unconscious, can you hold a football? Nah, just thinking about how we got ripped off by the cheese that year, Ray. Then it rolls, fucking. If it rolls an inch farther, it's our ball still on the half inch hard line, and we just hand it to Nick Chubb, and that's it. I just wow. You talking about my semi-pro football days? We didn't have a fucking punter. I had to punt, kick, and play quarterback. That's about all I can say about it. You know what I mean? I was very good. How did the golf, oh, I gotta post in my golf videos. My bad, Jason. I gotta post it, man. You should see me, you know what I mean? I fucking took my three wood and I was out there and just. You can hear when I crack that fucking golf ball. It sounded like a 30 out 6 went off. <laughs> that's when you make, that's when you know you make that connection. I'm a big fan of golf. I can't watch golf, but I can play it. Watching that shit, I'll kick the TV out of the wall. Now, what is it? Boss Lady Bird. Is that her name? She uses my name and her name, too. That's cool. She good people. She wants to interview me for what? The struggle. <laughs> I run a podcast, man. I'm just not letting uh, episode three's been done. I just ain't released it. You, you should see what I did episode three on the truth behind the Confederate flag. Boy, it's gonna be a controversial one, ain't it? How many uh, slaves have been purchased by the Confederate flag? Don't worry, I'll wait. Abraham Lincoln, exact words. Abraham Lincoln, exact words. A white man and a black man can never live in society together. The day we free them, we will take them back. What the fuck are you waiting on? We will enslave them and sell them to 40% to the southern colonies. Not one. And you know there was over 200 and some flags during that time. A lot of people don't know their shit, man. And they finally, in as for, to protect the southern soldiers, that's the blood of Christ, the cross of St. Christopher, and the white of St. Joseph. Did you guys know that? St. Christopher was hung on a cross like this. They wouldn't hang him on a dogwood tree like Jesus. 
they were scared to, so they hung him like this instead of like this. And they didn't use a dogwood tree. What do you think that is on the rebel flag? I promise you. I want to make anybody a copy of this that wants it. PhD, Dr. Phil Kid, preacher for 20 years. Sits there and preaches this. It's part of my podcast. You know what I mean? I sit there and preach what I hear him say. You know? Their own people. Like when you hear the story about Kuta Kinte, that was their own people. His dad told him to never cross the creek, never cross that water. He was a king of his tribe, dumbasses. So it ain't funny, it's just the truth. Caught and brought to the beaches of Africa and sold to the American flag, 1776. Betsy Ross, don't worry. It's not even about how the roots, how that part went, but the part I'm talking about is how many slaves was owned by Robert E. Lee. What about Stonewall Jackson? Over 700. How many bit for Robert E. Lee? How many bit for Stonewall Jackson? More than they even owned. Did you know that, way? Facts. I got a friend to tell me, man, y'all should have took our whole fucking state. You see me do my live video in West Virginia. I promise you, we got one probably the prettiest capitals in the United States. Boone County has probably one of the prettiest capitals, too. Courthouses. Quarters. Look up one. Gold tops. Google what I'm saying all you want because you know, it's going to show exactly what I'm saying is the truth. That shit's crazy, man. You know? And, and I heard this guy earlier say that the, the rebel flag was not a heritage flag. It was a complete hate flag. Okay, at every Klan rally in the world, every United States flag, the rebel flag came later. No, it didn't. But what other flag stands to the right? And what did they burn? Not a rebel flag. And if you want to go real technical, the swastika is a Japanese peace sign from the ancient days of medieval times. Hitler took it, redesigned it, and made it what it was. I just know my shit, man. I've been to the Holocaust Museum, Smithsonian's. I'm a big his history person. Major on that shit. My son is, too. He wants me to take him to the Holocaust Museum. One, if you ever go there, you'll, you know, you'll have a whole different perspective on what happened. whole different perspective about what happened in that fucking war. It was just it was insane from what I saw, from what I thought I knew. You know? What's up, Scott? Not much, brother. Sitting here breaking down the truth behind the fucking Confederate flag. But it was, you know, what it was, it's not even the real Confederate flag. It's just a battle flag. The real one's called the Stars and Bars. It's red and blue, and it's got 13 things, just like Betsy Ross. This flag does, stands for 13 colonies. Every Confederate flag I have on me has 13 stars in it. Even the West Virginia piece of my chest. He's doing a lot better, JR. Them museums are in Washington, D.C., both of them are. The Smith and Sonian. In Washington, D.C. Yeah, the Holocaust is definitely in Washington, D.C. The Vietnam Memorial Wall, uh, I, said, I stood right where Forrest Gump jumped in the water when he gave me a Forrest. Yeah, you finally give him some pussy when you die with AIDS. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Does she not, guys? The only body a fucker. Then she finally gives him some. I think I should shut his fuck. I'll be going to this whole other country. I started bawling and crying when I first seen that shit when he says that. This motherfucker don't know. You getting ready to go have a R I mean A K seven point six two by thirty nine millimeters flying over your head per second, brother. And you have no knowledge of that. Yes, yeah, she does. You know she is sick during the part. I know everything about it. You know how they made the movie. She is sick during the part when she does the bar scene. How many roads must do it? Once she sings that right there. That's why she sounds like she does. She's sick. She says she barely worn any clothes during the whole movie. That's Morant, John Morant, and the Joker, Denver and Memphis. Memphis was at 36.29. I forgot to put my fan duel bet in. I was betting on the Blazers to win, the Grizzlies to win, and a double parlay. I would have won $116 off fucking 25, and I'm pissed. My rant's tearing it up, dude. Somebody said he done beat up a little boy or something. The book. And if you go watch, you know what movie that I adore? Christine. Stephen King's Christine. Or Stand By Me. That's actually the body. And Christine is actually not called Christine. It was called something else. And it was bought by John, that dude that does the fucking vampire movies, Carpenter. And the first con the book of Christine is the guy that never he buys it off his brother. He said he loved that fucking car so much he died in it. Blew his brains out in it. Well the car's not haunted. It's his body in the back of it in the book. But in a movie, that fucking fifty eight point of fucking fury is beautiful. Beautiful. I know, that's why I'm talking about it, man. I mean, that's my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's from that and Forrest Gump's probably got the best soundtracks of all time. Keep an eye, but you can't come in. Little Richard's on it. Uh, Beast of Burden is on, in that, on that soundtrack. Uh, I mean, it's, it's perfect. I love you, too. And when it, I, I mean, I love it when they kill Arnie. And that, that pisses that car the fuck off. I'm like, yeah, now. Except for the 442 or something. And that motherfucker at 350 just didn't do it. No, uh-uh. The original owner is dead in the back. Was supposed to be. been. Cujo was the first one he bought from him. Stephen King stood among himself. There was no Anne Rice. No John Grissom. I was just watching the thing on it last night. John Carpenter, Stephen King is the creators of motherfucking Christine Boys. Telling you. They got they had seventy Plymouth Furies, ended up with forty two, I think he said, that made the movie. Like how yeah, I guess Deuce of Hazard. The original owner is dead in the back of the fucking car. That's what possesses everybody. His brother sells it to people. See what I mean? I love it. He said, the smell of a new car. There ain't nothing as good as that smell, but a new car and pussy. Marnie don't know what to say. You know what I mean? I love how the old man sells that car to him. He said, she probably won't even start. He said, oh, she'll start. He said, but, he said, I never thought I'd sell her until she killed my fucking wife. Listen to what he says in that movie, man. It kills his wife, too. Remember, it makes the girl choked on the potato. It kills the little girl. It kills the guys, and as soon as it comes on, that's why he said he made it like that, you know? I, I love it. It starts playing, uh, shit. My favorite 
him that when a bird bad to the bone was the first song he plays, and the second song he plays is uh when it squashes that dude to death. But then my baby, she's skinny as macaroni. That's when it kills that old man and talks to him. It keeps it at his shop. You know what I mean? And it starts playing at it. He said, you better keep it. Uh, that's not a 58, it's a 57. I always thought it was a 58 too, to me and my brother both. And it's labeled on Google as a 58. But go listen to him talk about it. He said it's a 57. Uh, that's not bird is the word. Best song ever wrote Crimson and Clover. Tommy James and the Shondells. It's a 57, nigga. You want to bet a million dollars? A million dollars. I didn't know this till last night. It's supposed to be a 58 Plymouth Fury. Am I wrong? It's a 57 Plymouth Fury. He said because the Mustangs was sticking out at that time. But, you know what I mean? He, he said, and this one, this one. I couldn't believe what I was hearing him say. That's a 57. Or to God. But if you Google it, everything that comes up is a 58. I'll send you the same thing I watched. Which part? God damn it, Paul. What the fuck is this? I love every part of that. Have you ever seen Siege of Firebase Glory? I hate Full Metal Jacket. They kill the best actor that could ever be in a war movie. 57, noted as a 58, Plymouth Fury. Bro, ain't, 50, ain't Christina 57, noted as a 58? Promise you. Seeing them they made the yellow one. Christine's the red one, that's what's haunted and shit. But the car is modified from a 58 and a 57 put together. Go watch the making of the fucking movie. The car represents a 58, she yes. But he could not find the, that many. Go watch what I'm talking about. That's just like, you know. My baby, she's, uh, whatever he says. She's skinny as a piece of macaroni. You know what I mean? I love that shit. And it gets down. Oh, oh, and I love it, you know what I mean, rock and roll, well, that's what it plays when it, uh, they try to crush it, at the end, he's letting them know, I'll never die, rock and roll, it's here to stay, rock and roll, I'll never die, day. I love when it's playing, there, there's not a bad song in it, is there not, guys, when it plays Beast of Bird, and when it chases down at 69, Camaro, or 68. Nah, I've heard about that one though. See, a lot of people don't know Lance like we do, and the body is stand by me. That's a short novel. Misery and all that came first. Bony Maroney's called the science, right? I know that. My baby, she's. Something, she is skinny as a piece of macaroni, and of course the old man with the cigar, because when it first comes on, it's still got plastic in the scene that crushes his ass. The black dude probably drops fucking ash in it. I know about that, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to remember what song it's playing when it kills him, because there's not a bad song in the movie. And keep it knocking, but you can't catch when they start beating it, you know? And then he says, show me what you can do. That guy says, oh, they discontinued this paint like 20 years ago. He knows he ain't done that state police investigator. He knew what was up. And then the police fucking, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's when that fat boy comes up to me and says, you ain't mad at me, are you, Arnie? You know what I mean? When it starts playing that song, and the lights come on. That's Christine's original music right there, that creepy music. 
I got a girl, she named Bonnie Maroney. That's it, she's skinny as a piece of macaroni. That's right, you know, that's it right there. I got a girl named Bonnie Maroney. She's as skinny as a piece of that shit was classic. That's doo-wops, I love that shit, dude. What's the first one that's playing? The, the second, the very first one's bad to the bone. Na 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 na. Boom. It starts up and you see that Chrysler V coming up. You know? It's Buddy Holly, it's playing. Mm bop, mm bop. I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna be. Mm bop. Cause he says your love is bigger than a Cadillac. And it's when it squashes him right there. When it says that part. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You can't get better songs than that right there. I got Buddy Holly playing right there. That's what it does. Mm bop bop Buddy Holly. I'ma tell you how it's gonna be. You gonna give your love to me. That's what it's playing. Best song on this beast of bird though, probably. And that's right though, ain't it, Lance? I'm right. Shit, every day. It's a getting closer. Go, I got buddy all shit. Going faster than the Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. Pretty, 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 pretty. Hendrix looked up to that shit, people. That's the first man to pick up a Stratocaster and down, 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 down. He could kill that motherfucker, man. The first buddy Holly song come out was Baby, baby, can't you hear my heartbeat? It's Buddy Holly and the Hermits. Don't take me back on you boys. I have to blow you up on this shit. I know my shit. Baby, baby, can't you hear my heart beat? That's Buddy Holly and the Hermits. That's exactly who that is. There's the own uh, Richie Valen, too, though. 17 years old. He was killing that shit. You know what I mean? La Bama and old Don. He killed that shit, too, dog. It, he's exactly right. It goes to Tanya Tucker, and when he's picking him up in that 1970 Dodge, like the fucking one from the Dukes of Hazzard, but it's blue. That's why Arnie wants a car, because they're always in shop and shit. That's exactly right. It starts playing it, and, ten, and uh, I'll forever love you. I love when it starts playing that. It puts the slides on Arnie's face and shit, because he's got that piece of glass to him. You can't beat a movie like that, man. Jerry O'Connell's The Fat Kid Crawling Across the Tracks on Stand By Me. River Phoenix. Keita Sutherland. Look what a fucking cast, man. Corey Feldman. Look what a cast. I played Stand By Me. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that one dude played in it. When I, Jerry, when I played on Jerry Connell with the back kid crawling across the tracks, I about lost it right there. The little kid just came across the tracks. What's his name? Uh, that's probably everybody's all time movie. It's actually called The Body Mike. A short novel by Stephen King. And it was bought and turned into Stand By Me. When the night burn uh ace is either southern he plays ace i love when he looks at him he says no i'm just gonna shoot you ace i got that backs him right the fuck up on it joe's apartment was funny as hell that was jerry o'connor on that one damn boys remember the leprechaun the very first leprechaun, you know that's Jennifer, An Jennifer Anderson. My son got the box set of this shit. I never knew it was fucking Jenner An Jennifer Anderson, man. She's beautiful and sexy as hell in it. I mean, all natural, gorgeous. <laughs> really? They probably didn't walk that far, you know what I mean, as they talk about in the movie. Because Bussy's name tells a story, you know. He says, we walked for three days. 
And we said, and when we seen the boy's body, how he explained it and shit. You know. Me and Noose was talking about that earlier, you know. You know. But Jackie, uh, I'm getting ready by this stove, bro. I'm bringing this, this playing slide music, like, kind of like Jamie Johnson, uh, Chris Stapleton style, you know. I love that sound. I know a lot of people ain't seen so many movies, it's unreal, dude. Like those movies right there. That train part is the most epic part. It'll always be the most epic part. Because every little kid was like, is he gonna make it? Is he gonna, you know what I mean? Well, fuck, I, I got them around here. We run across those things. Get up, kid. I want to do his ass. You had Vern, Gordy, Gordy's the one telling the story, right? Gordy's the one telling the story, I think. Yeah, because he types it in, he said, I've never met a group of friends better than when I was 12 years old. That's one of the best fucking lines I've ever heard in a movie. Right there. Bam. I keep asking her, warden her, warden, but she keeps telling me no. Another great line. I couldn't believe that was Will Wheaton. That freaked me out. That tripped me out when I seen that. I didn't know Gordy was Will Wheaton. That's the one about fucking tripping me out. It's got the damn leech on his dick. He passed it out. Ain't nobody mistake Corey Spellman's ugly ass. Ain't nobody mistaking that. You know? You know, I swear. My brother was telling me, he said, they got this new program that you can speak into it, a story, like the short story of Stephen King or Misery or something, and it will write it out for you. Man, i got to get in on it. Yeah, Richard, there you go. You know what I mean? Best movie ever? River Phoenix is in Stand By Me Too. Yeah, see, River Phoenix, there you go. Uh, the best movie ever. Casino or Heat. All day. I don't want to go with Casino. Because it's so... I mean, you fuck up, you fuck around. You don't know what you're doing in life. It's so life learning. Wherever Phoenix died... Or something. But I'd go with Casino. Robert De Niro owns the Wild Wonderful Wife. He owns Tribeca Film. And he's probably my favorite actor, him and Joe Pesci. The Monster movies were good. I'm a big fan of this fucking Tom Hardy cat now. Smoking the Bandit. I had the 78. That's a 77. I'll argue with y'all boys about my cars because I know, man, I'm going to prove y'all wrong in a minute about that 57. Period. He said he had to call it a 58 because of the way things was going. He bought over 70, 1957 Plymouth Fury, he says. Plain as day. I always thought it was a 58 Fury. Maximum overdrive, motherfuckers. Don't forget about that. That's called the truck. Short story. I was forgetting about some of the best movies ever made, man. Shining, all that. Stephen King is a man amongst boys when he writes a fucking novel. The Green Mile. That's the one I was probably going to say is probably my favorite movie. And that's even wrote by Stephen King. That's like four novels, four short, short stories. You know? I think The Green Mile, maybe. You got Stand By Me, Christine, The Green Mile. Boy, I know my shit. Maximum Overdrive. Uh, Maximum Overdrive was the truck. It, it, it's, it's original. What's called the truck. Just like Christine wasn't called Christine. Just like fucking Stand By Me was called the body. You know. I gotta go with Casino and Heat. I still have to go with Casino and Heat. You know. 
Scorsese. I, I love Scorsese. Nobody beats Marty Scorsese when it comes to making a fucking film. Goodfellas and shit, you know what I mean? Nobody can beat that dude. That's just in my opinion. Him and Quentin Tarantino is badass. Uh, Roger Rodriguez is uh, fucking the one with what's her name in it from Charm. She puts that fucking machine down her day. My brother knows it. Goes fucking on. I was like that. That's some bad shit right there now. I can go with that, you know what I mean? That bitch can jump on me in bed and bring that M16 with her. It, yeah, it, it's always the town of Derry. Derry, Maine is where Stephen King is from, people. Why you think he always says the town of Derry? Maine. Casinos, just too true, and yeah, a Bronx tale. You can't forget a Bronx tale. Now she can't leave. Calm as fuck. I asked them politely. They said they just wanted a drink. They can get a drink. But the moment they start acting like the dumbasses, Sonny goes over and smacks that door and says, Now she can't sleep. And I'll never, I love how he narrates that movie. He says, I just watched eight men's souls leave their body. You know what I'm saying? Pet Cemetery, you know what I mean? Was amazing. My cat was named Church and everything, you know? I, I can, you know, it's a great movie, just like this one. I'm gonna watch it. Mad Max. I can watch it 50 times. Sammy the Bull. That's, yeah, I know. I think De Niro should. Joe Pesci, man, plays his roles just amazingly. Look what he does in The Irishman. Look, look at him in Goodfellas, Home Alone. You can't get a better actor than him. My brother's a big fan of Tommy Lee Jones. But look at the lineup we just named of Stephen King, guys. How many fucking number one hit movies are right there? Remember when Final Destination first came out? That shit was bad. I said saying a while ago, I don't think nobody heard me. Because Gordy reminds me from, of the kid that wears a big ass, long ass fish hat. I don't think nobody heard me. Ain't River Phoenix the one that gets killed in the end of uh, Stand By Me when he's writing about it, trying to break up a fight with him? Who is that? You know what I mean? That's River Phoenix, the one that takes up for him, wears a white t shirt. Wraps his Marlboros up in his white t shirt right here, like a real man does. You know what I mean? He's replicating his daddy. He's wearing his t-shirt and takes his cigarettes and wraps them up right here. You see a man do that, that man's very fucking wise and you better listen to what that man says. I'll tell you that right now. I thought that was him. He's dead in real life now. He's the he's my, everyone's favorite one, of course, because he's taken up for a million. I can tell you, I mean, Lollipop, and that's when they're walking the railroad tracks. Okay. I would love to be 12 years old again. I love how he said that. There's no better friends from the friends of the time when he was 12 years old. He's the one typing on what you think, like you said. Fuck it, I'm trying to quit them things. I smoke better products. Did he really? He OD'd? River Phoenix, man, he's my favorite one in the movie. You think so? You like Top Gun soundtrack compared to like Forrest Gump to something happening in here? What it is, you know how political that song was? You know we played that song in our choppers to let our men know that we was coming in. Fuck Tom Cruise. That was badass, you know what I mean? That's Buffalo Springfield, New York, Jefferson Airplane. When the truth isn't here to be in leave. He was called Jefferson Starship first. Don't get me going on my music. You got Creedence in that. You got Skinner in it. 
Freebird, Sweet Home Alabama. No, 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 no. There's not a better war movie than We Were Soldiers either. Sergeant McKenzie. Lay me down in the cold, cold ground. Ready for many men have gone. I love that shit. When he starts playing bagpipes and our chopper pops up and fucking pop pop and them fucking goddamn sentry guns start fucking eating them tojos alive, boy. We see you now, motherfucker. We see you now. I'll be the first to step on and I'll be the last to step off. Dead or alive, we'll all come home together. I get chills when I watch it. I get chills. There's not a better speech I mean, he said, than Mel Gibson when he says that right there. You know what I mean? There's some great war movies, but We Were Soldiers just fucking tops it. You got We Saving Private Ryan. Y'all's not even named. I mean, uh, Platoon was named, I think. Full Metal Jacket. Uh, I mean, I can just keep going with that shit. Jarhead, Jarhead 2. Uh, Siege on the Fire Base Quarry was amazing. Because we're talking about one of the baddest actors ever. Earl Lee Henry. I don't care about your religion, your creed. Uh, you know, I'm also, I can't say the N word, you know what I mean? If you're whatever, you know what I mean? You look like you wouldn't give a man a reach around and give him a good goddamn reach around for courtesy. You would fuck him in the ass and wouldn't give him a good reach. I love that motherfucker. That's Ed Henry right there. The moment he dies, the moment I turn that movie off. My son loves it because when they get it, you know what I mean? He hears me watch that one part when that woman snipers him because Joker is a pussy. I would take my sidearm and fuck her with him. You want to kill three of my friends, you motherfucker. I would let the rats eat her just like a boy says. Kid me. Kid me. No, you ain't it. You know what I mean? Man. This is my rotten dude. That's That's been said since the beginning. That was before Metal Jacket. I think I've known that since I've been born. Right, guys? This is my rifle. This is my gun. This is for shooting and this is for fun. C-130 rolling down the street, the wheel broke off and the motherfucker fled, destination that, see y'all know my, my brother was in the military, dude, y'all didn't know that shit, did you? I got the ocean to my back, my ocean back, my enemy to my front, and the ocean to my rear, they would sing these cadences, man, you know what I mean, and I'd watch them. And they sit there and do these fucking badass, you know what I mean, stances. Just like, you know. And he had to stay there for 22 weeks for shooting somebody. For real, for real. He's jumped out of helicopters, shot him. I've shot him 16s, M4s, AK-47s. <coughs> what about Patrick Swayze, boys? Y'all forget one of the best actors ever fucking act. I forget about Roadhouse, Ghost. Uh, I mean, that dude was amazing, man. Especially in Roadhouse. Sam Elliott's the fucking man. He says, any of you motherfuckers call me dad, I'll kill you myself. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, Sergeant Major, he said, I ain't shooting this fucking BB gun. Does he not, boys? He calls that M16 a BB gun. He said, I got this right here. It brought me through World War One when I was young, when he made all them jumps. He said, he said, oh, when they get close enough, them motherfuckers will know. 1911-45, he's badass. You cannot be fucking that. Sam Elliott is a beast, man. He's probably one of my favorite actors up there with uh, De Niro and Pesci. Bye for it. Bye for it. Jack Nicholas, and not, he's in bad shape, I heard. He didn't even come out for, for LeBron James's record-winning thing there. When, when you know he didn't come to the Lakers game, you know he's sick. 
The Big Lebowski. Yeah. Yeah, John Goodman. That's a hell of an actor. John Candy was a hell of an actor. Uncle Buck. I can just sit here and name every one of his movies. Chris Farley was a motherfucking amazing. I think we'll get involved with it more. Just like, you know, that Adolf Hitler was able to conquer them countries within days. Days. You know this, right? Okay, Russia's very pissed off right now because we're basically fighting Russia. We're just not losing our men. We're giving them jab ones and shit, okay? Uh, Mark Wahlberg's got a little bit more acting to do to catch Brad Pitt and Leo than him. See what I'm saying? Oh, my buddy Joshua Kemp, the dude that won the TRL thing, he come here and lived in, stay at my house. You, you remind me of Ethan Hawke. I said, don't you fucking ever say it again. I hate Ethan Hawke, man. The only thing he ever did good was training day and he's a pussy in it. If we don't get Donald Trump back in there, when we do go to war, we're going to die, guys. That's the bottom line. we got North Korea just announced today that they're flying missiles again, motherfuckers, over there. And then, here's what's going to happen. Here, here look. Here's, here's Kim Jong Un's fucking rocket. Here's Korea. It's going to fall right back down on top of them. I mean, like a bottle rocket, it don't work. You know what I mean? It's going to be a fucking dud. We are not scared of none of that. What we need to worry about is a man named XI. He runs the country of fucking China. And he done threaten America. We owe him, what is it, 30 some trillion dollars? He said if we didn't make some kind of effort to pay the money back to his people, we would be regretful and they would strike deadly to make us be regretful. What do you think that means? Russia hands China the guns. God damn, they got the means then, don't they? Hmm. You car, oh, you want car certified? Man, that's special. You'll be special. You gotta know how to time chain. It's all about time chain. You ever watch Steve's song if you ain't car certified? Time chain. You learn how to work time chain. But anyway, what's going to go down, guys, in my opinion, Korea is going to back up China. They have the nuclear capabilities. China has the men. Russia has the fucking weapons. Open your fucking eyes. But we have what's called the United Nations. We have the United, I mean, a huge mat in South America. It's, it's going to be a massive war. Get your boots ready, and they're already talking about drafting women. Hoorah. Get ready, motherfuckers. Get ready. I've been ready. I was born ready. I was born for a little war. Seeing me, motherfuckers, I want to go. You know what I mean? Uh, if that's the case, the Carhartt, the only thing they know, the only thing they are, has got a goddamn chip in them, that's all they got. I ain't got nothing to do with what I wear, brother. It's my work wear, and I love my Carhartt. You know what I mean? I got my Carhartt Bond jackets. I don't, you know what I mean? I like the original shit. It's got the Bond beanies, the gray beanies, the shirts. You gotta be Carhartt certified. I talked to Johnny Goble today personally. Is that why? Really? Are you fucking shitting me? There's a cure for that shit. But what the fuck is he? What? He, oh, goodness. My fucking police and half on me, I'll fucking shoot you. I want you late. That's what I'm saying. I got an old timer laying right here on deck. Motherfucker, I'll show you how it works. Hep C? Oh, hell no. Hell gonna make me puke, motherfucker. Squirt that shit. Shut the fuck up right now. I'm gonna knock y'all in the head this little fucking Chipotle Budweiser hot sauce bottle. Hell gonna make me sick.
That's nasty shit, man. That means, you know what I mean? I know what that means. That means you fuck some nasty bitch or you been running some syringes, nigga. I know I'm dirty, homie. I'll tell you every number on every pill. I'll tell you how every drug dealer gets down. I'll tell you who does drugs, who don't do drugs, who ain't doing drugs. Motherfucker, I'll look you dead in the eye and tell you if you're strung out. I don't know. Check these out, Lance. These are the PDX ones. That's for the judge. I think I showed them to you the other night, didn't I? They got three plates and then 12 beads. That's just for a 410. And that motherfucker rip a hole that big in that door. No, sweetheart. Hepatitis C has a cure now. It's controllable, not curable. A and B is curable. I know. Trust me. I know. Oh, I never had nothing like that. God damn, I'd kill a motherfucker if they gave it to me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If, I, if, if a bitch ever give me anything, that motherfucker better run and hide in Guantanamo Bay or somewhere. You know what I mean? In the hole. I'm serious. You better go to motherfucking Antarctica and live with the penguins. I'm telling you. That would give me some 308 rounds, man. That's my favorite gun. That's my baby. That's like a jacked up AK Magnum. I know what Hep C is. It's controllable, but not curable. I just said that. Sweetheart. I'm not arguing you. Nuh uh. Keith Whitley, son. I'm, you're making up some shit now, man. You talking about Keith Whitley seems to tell over you. I love her, motherfucking. When you say nothing at all and don't close your eyes. That 30 30 ain't gonna shoot no fucking thousand yards, my friend. 30 30 shoot 300 tops. Done put it to test. 30 off 6 shot 700 yards and didn't even fucking drop a bead. 308 shoots over a thousand. The longest shot with a, you know, regular rifle history. Vietnam, 1,500 yards, brother. 308. Oh, God, that's perfect, man. Why would you want to fight Keith Whitley, son? I don't want to make music with that homeboy. I love Keith Whitley. You say it best. This is when you say nothing. Every one of them is wrote to Lori Morgan. People don't know that. Good as I was of you. Bitch, you made him drink yourself to death. You whore. I can't help it, I get mad. You know what I mean? If I were alone in the desert without a drink of that motherfucker could sing, boy. I'm a big Gary Allen fan. Got some more on Gary Allen's, my boys. You know. That's my boy. That's my soul. That's my last name. That's a love like you'll never know. That's my boy. That's his new shit. I know he was a drunk long before he got with her, but God damn it made it worse, brother. She, you know, they wrote songs towards each other. If you listen to way you tell Lori I love her is recorded. I hate Morgan Waller. Please don't mention pop country in here. I just told, I just said, you know, I just said it. I'm here to put the cunt back in country, the dick back in Dixie, cause this fucking bullshit I'm hearing nowadays ain't nothing but a fucking bunch of shit to me. That's Hank 3. He tells all them little punks how it is. Some say I'm the old man or, and I'm just gonna sell these drugs. If you know what I'm thinking, that you think Morgan Waller really fucking sucks. Sorry. My son loves That's my son's favorite artist. No wonder he'd get out of here. I'm sleeping for my guitars in my room with my amp and shit. I've had it hooked up. Hate Morgan Waller. Hate Brantley Gilbert. You're gonna kick in the sticks and you ain't never lived in the sticks in one fucking day in your life, homie. You live in North Carolina fucking mountains that barely go like this. And, uh, oh my God, Luke Bryan. I won't take her in my deer stand. What the fuck are you talking 
What did you just say? You're going to take somebody in their deer stand. Or blind, whatever the fuck he was saying on the radio the other day. I about fucking choked. Now, do I turn you on at all when I kiss you, baby? Now, that's real country, son. Look what you've done to yourself. You see what I mean? Just like Jason Aldean is about the only one that's kept it real a little bit. Besides motherfucking Justin Moore, I swear. Stood on that bank when I got baptized. Gave me a 30-30 when I turned nine. See what I'm saying? That motherfucker, he, he sings from the heart. The other ones are making shit up. I'm sorry. I'm a son of a son. I get chip what I've said and done. I remember watching old Waylon when he was shooting his shotgun. My son hates Hankery. It's a certain kind of living. It's a certain kind. But if you want to use a 30 30, bro, I mean, that's the best brush gun, all around gun you can use in West Virginia. That's a fact. It depends on if you just want to use a Model 94 Marlin or if you're going to use the, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah, Tyler Childers seems, you know what I mean, but what Tyler has, Ralph Stanley found 50 years ago. See what I'm saying? I think he tries to sound a lot like Ralph. Draven is unique, but he's changing his shit. Can tell, I'll fucking write, let's all go down. They sing Jessica, don't you know? They sing jet about my uncle and everything. I absolutely love him. You know what I mean? My favorite one is, Please walk softly on this heart of mine. I love that shit. The dude is playing the guitar and singing with that beard. That, that motherfucking uh, handlebar beard. He looks like my buddy. He looks just like him. We're talking about real country here. We're talking about John Michael Montgomery. You know what I mean? Remember that shit? Ruby red lips, blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm sure the one about to bid my heart goodbye. I can sing every fucking Joe Diffie. You see what I'm saying? Ashley McBride's okay. I look more at like uh, the women singers. Uh, Strawberry wine. Deanna Carter. Did I shave my legs for this, baby? Carl Brooks, there you go. Gary Allen, man. You know what I mean? I'm a certain, you're a certain. I'm a different kind of man. Loving you against my will. Smoke rings in the dark. Right where I need to be. Loving uh, her man is probably my favorite one. Gary Allen is a fucking great artist, man. Uh, my ex, you know the struggle. That, I mean, that Sturgill Simpson dude plays a gunmetal gray guitar just like mine. The only one I've ever seen. Ever. And... I knew Kaiser would say that because he's from Illinois. They like that shit up there. They like Hank 3 up there. They like Sturgill Simpson up there. They like uh, a lot of uh, Moccasin Creek, uh, Big Snow, shit like that. My neighbors. Am I wrong, brother? See, some of that's pop country. I pissed on Florida Georgia Line. I say, I say that at the Justin Moore concert. You can hear me say it on YouTube. I pissed on Florida Georgia Line once. Justin Moore comes out with just the good old boys. My father killed it. Never meant it no harm. Martina McBride, yeah, there you go. Faith Hill, uh, you ain't mentioned the Queens here, sweetheart. We're talking about Faith Hill, motherfucking uh, Deanna Carter, uh, Reba McIntyre. The Judds, the Judds, I just sealed it right there. Why not me, love can build a bridge. Grandpa, shall I go on? Young love, I mean the Judds, there he is for you. Or uh, 
Oh, water in. No red or lean. Where you is a beast. Tanya Tucker. Without you, what do I do with me? Two sparrows and a hurricane. Man and shit. What both them songs will make me fucking cry. So my sister loved Tanya Tucker. What was that one song? She'd sing it was real fast. Don't, don't mention Dolly Parton in my room, please. That fake ass titty, ugly ass motherfucker. I'm in the stream. That is what you are. You're fucking shitty as Kenny Rogers. <laughs> they, they're, they're both like in slow motion in every song they've ever sung. Ray becomes in her kid and they want a chance, it won't let me down. She just fucking breaks it down. Dolly's like, I'm in the stream. I'm 78 and 100 million years old and you people just don't know my titties are definitely fat mm -hmm. and so you know what I mean I, I just hate that bitch I don't know why it, it, she looks like a fucking and Nicki Minaj I hate that girl she looks like somebody you can spin a top Nicki Minaj looks like a top you can spin that bitch won't stop spinning I look at Shakira her hips and ass definitely does not lie Scarlett Johansson don't uh, I can name the hottest women. I love the, uh, Kayla Kukio or whatever her name is from the Big Bang Theory. That bitch is bad. Go look at her. Sorry. If I show and I'd be trying to hit that every night. <laughs> yeah, 90s even. Uh, she's been in slow motion since they wrote that song in the 70s, sweetheart. Islands in the Stream. I promise you, that's when she's with Kenny Rogers. Okay, let's talk about couples. Who was with who? Who was uh, Stevie Nicks with? Let's see who knows. Let's see who knows first. Who was Stevie Nicks? What about folk music? We're going to talk about Bob Dylan all day and the Grateful Dead. Dolly was with all of them. Thank you. That's why. Not. That's what. What's her name said before she overdosed and died. The judge woman. She said you can't win a damn award in Nashville no more for that fucking Dolly. She's been with everybody. Everyone in the band. Nah, she's actually in love with Tom Petty. Tom Petty and uh, what's her name with lovers? You don't know that. The bitch from Fleetwood Mac. I just said her name. Tom Petty and her was going, always went out, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? A lot of people know that, that that's what we, that who it was. The bitch from Fleetwood Mac, what the fuck's her name? I just said her name. I hate that bitch anyway. She sings landslide and all that shit. And you can go your own way. You can call it Stevie Nicks. You can call it another. No, the chain, the edge of 17. She gets down. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you go, you know who saved. All right, another question for you guys. Who saved Woodstock? Living like a gypsy. Just don't tell them I've gone crazy. I'm just down on me. Who saved Woodstock? Let's see if we <laughs> Jimmy fucking Hendrix. How those people not? I mean, one after another. Everybody was leaving Woodstock. The Hell's Angels was the security. Hendrix comes out and plays what? Star Spangled Banner. You had Jimmy Hendrix come out and save it. There's people leaving and shit, you know what I mean? Then he comes out and he plays Star Star, Star Spangled Banner. Then he plays what else? Hey Joe. And Boo Boo Child. Slight return. Noose can pick that shit just like you dug this man out of the grave. Does anybody know who uh, Jesse Mullins or whatever that dude's name is? It sounds just like Johnny Cash is. Since Sunday morning coming down and 
all that stuff. He killed himself. Pink haired dude. He's like, yeah, that was Johnny Cash reincarnated people. What is people not seeing there? YouTube existed 12 years ago like it should have. That kid wouldn't be dead. He'd be famous as fuck. He sounds just like Johnny Cash. I've never heard something like that in my life. And the kid that sings for Journey. It's for Steve Perry. He's a, a, a Philippine kid. He sounds just like Steve Perry. Yeah, the punk looking kid. Yeah, Jesse Mullins is his name. I promise you, he sounds amazing. He says, you got a joint. You know? And if you go watching, uh, that boy killed himself, man. Did you know that, Mike? He felt out of place. I couldn't believe when Chris Farley did what he did. He thought people made fun of him. You know, you never know, never know what another mind's thinking. Yeah, he's got tattoos all on his hands. He's punk looking. Kind of resembles Johnny Knox going away when he has his black hair. But it's just like Johnny Cash, man. I hear the train a coming. Roll and, he, and he's got that one guitar, but when he sings Sunday morning coming down, I mean, it's beautiful. And it's just like him. That is definitely, you know what I mean? People say that people don't live on. Yeah, they do too. You know? And voices. And sound real. If you put yourself in that perspective, sit there and think about this. I'm going to sit here, and here's what I'm going to talk like. A broadcaster from the 1930s. Ah, uh, yeah, he hit the ball again. It's the third inning, and they're at the bottom of the night. How you? That's how he got Quagmire's voice. Seth McFarlane. And he said, everybody knows of Peter. Obnoxious. Boston. Then you got the gay baby. And then you got his normal voice. If you go watch him, how he can do that, it, it freaks me out, man. He can go from wanting to talk to himself, and, you, know, you know what I mean? That's split person personalities. For sure. My favorite person does it is, uh, oh, what's his name from Big Mouth? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what's his name, guys? He played in the league. He kills everything he does. Of course. Married, his wife is super, super fucking beautiful. Uh, shit. He looks like he might be a little bit foreign, too. Damn it. He's my favorite, like, he's got three shows on fucking Netflix. Big Mouth, uh, Human Resources, all that bones in him. Nick Crow. Nick Crow is the funniest motherfucker out right now. My son is a major fan of uh, Adam Sandler, but watch out. Here comes Nick Crow and his crew. And that uh, Goldberg kid, whatever his name is. The one that plays Andrew. You know what I mean? That Nick Crow is funny as fuck. He plays the hormone monster. He plays the little girl. He plays that other one. And then he's got the other funny, the Mexican dude that plays in a lot of shit, plays in the league and all that. He plays the little boy that uh, rapes the couch cushions and shit all the time. Jay's his name is. You know that's supposed to be a cartoon for adults, right? <laughs> the human resources is. Not the uh, Big Mouth. The Big Mouth's supposed to be for kids. That's how he got his... Uh, Got him to put it on Netflix. That motherfucker's funny, though. Y'all seen Saucy Stress, right? That shit about kills me, man, every time. Danny, Danny McBride. He's probably my favorite comedian. Like, my son likes Adam Sandler. I gotta go with Danny McBride. He's bound down. Uh, when he plays Red in... Uh, Pineapple Express. He said, I don't know, man. Who's the anal bead going to? 
He said, I fucking ain't weak bones to me. He said, never mind, but I'd rather be the dragon. Not for sitting there with pads on him. Bitches be wearing when they're bleeding, when they're on their period. Listen to Bone Thugs Crossroad. <laughs> Bumped up up in the cushion. You know what I'm saying? Up against the fucking tub and shit. This shit kills me. Then he hits Craig Robinson with the... He said, I, I just killed you with a day. We went spying on motherfucker. He blows these toes off. That shit kills me. That ain't even broad. You can't talk this motherfucker. Him and Walter Goggins kill me. When they play that motherfucking Baby Billy and uh, that preacher shit with Dan Aykroyd. I mean, John Goodman. I about fucking roll. I didn't even know this shit existed. It's called The Righteous Gemstones. You guys have to watch this shit. If you have not seen it, you are missing the fuck out. His hair is black. His sideburns are gray. And he's a fucking preacher. Danny McBride is a preacher. John Goodman's a preacher. Adam Devine is a preacher. We're talking about the dumbest motherfuckers in comedy. Adam Devine, people. The one that holds his dick, yes. The one I'm talking about from Game Over, man, yes. You heard me right. It's a preacher. <laughs> My son will not watch two minutes. Uh, he gets so mad because that's a blasphemy. That's the biggest sin you can commit if you're Christian. And he is Christian through and through, you know. But I, I can't fucking help it. I can't help it. John Goodman blows that one away to fucking Model 12, 12 gauge and buries him under his roller coaster. And calls it something, the Exodus or something. And that dumbass, ditchy ass girl. What's her name that plays in it, Mike? Surprise y'all ain't seen this shit. That shit is probably the funniest show out. It's called The Righteous Gemstone. Walter Goggins. Fucking girlfriend is from West Virginia and she has a baby. She was born in the commode, and she has a baby in the pool to party, and he lifts his fucking baby up. <laughs> he said, oh my God, it's a pool to party, baby. The way he talks, it just fucking drives me up, you know what I mean? He says, oh my God. She says, save it, baby, Billy, save it. And oh my God, he said, I'm trying. He says, I got it. The motherfucker slips and falls and all that shit. He says, no, no. When he pulls it out, he says, look, everybody. It's my party, baby. And you're talking about fucking rolling right there. That was it right there for me. Walter Goggins plays every role he plays is serious. And he never changes his voice. I'm talking about from Justified to the Hape Away. To the righteous gemstones, to vice principals. Does he ever change his voice? He's from Alabama and he's funnier than fuck. He said, You ever heard of a. Uh, well, I'm back. Prisoner of War Penitentiary, West Virginia. He said, By God, you was waiting for it. They had a surprise on the other side, didn't they? He said, you keep talking that hateful bitch. Like, he said, no, I'm just going to let this beautiful carriage just rock me right to sleep. That's my favorite movie. It's that, uh, what's his name? Um, probably. Uh, Quentin Tarantino, that killed Pulp Fiction. Anybody thinks it was dumb and fuck. The hateful eight is badass. And he said, I know you ain't cahoots with that bitch. He said, because you nearly drunk that coffee your fucking self. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you starting to believe I'm the sheriff of Red Rock now. And he said, no. And he said, you about drunk that coffee your fucking self. <laughs> Remember that part? And he said, oh, shit. I knew it was you, Joe Gage, or whatever the fuck your name is. I'm going to send you straight to hell. I can quote that movie. I mean, word for fucking word.
And then you got Channing Tatum in the bottom place playing Jody. He says, you bushwhack him, son of a bitch, you motherfucker. He says, come out here. He says, if you ain't got a gun, you better shit a gun. <laughs> like I said, I told you that then. He does another one up there. And he said, motherfucker. As soon as Tatum, Tatum pops his head up, he blows his brains in his sister's mouth. Now that is fucking epic. Bitch, you'll shut up now. She said he was giving up. He said, well, he took too fucking long. If you think about it, he how does he take his bounties in? But John Root, the hangman, catches your ass. Just like he caught Domergu, your ass gonna hang. Dance, bitch. It's pretty. I love when he says that dance for me. Fucking hanging her. He said, hold on, Daisy. I want to watch. I love that shit. That bitch was pissing on herself and foaming out the mouth. My God, that's what happened right there. Look at, look at Morant, guys. Look at that behind the back. Then, get that bitch. Look at this shit. Uh, who's Alan Iverson? Who the fuck, who the fuck's Alan Iverson? Who's your, look at, oh my goodness, that kid is sick, nasty. 23 and 10. Double, double already. Did you see him just go behind the back like that, guys? Rip that whole fucking thing. Just, I would have ripped that. Look at this. He's nasty, man. This is the number one highlight every night. That kid is nasty. I can't wait to my jersey this year. I ordered the one that says Memphis. I used to live down there in Memphis. That place is dangerous as fuck, man. I want the one that says Memphis in black. You're like that teal color with the black jersey. Who is it? Martin Guitar and the Hateful Eight. What are you talking about? Oh, Kurt Russell, yeah. Uh, and yeah, he smashes a fucking Martin D. I would give anything to because you know what she says. I'll be behind uh, in my, uh, something in Mexico when they're dead, John, or something. You know what I mean? And he, when he smashed the guitar, yeah, he fucking chains her to her and he pukes in that bitch's mouth. That shit is gruesome, son. That wasn't a prop. They really busted up. I say that every time I watch that movie. I say I'd give anything to have that guitar. I tell, you know, one of the cow I was like, you know what kind of guitar that is? I said, that's a fucking 1936 fucking Martin right there. Look how it's doubled up. Like You've got mail. You see how the top of it is? It's not solid. You've got mail. In it. You know exactly what I mean. Man, ain't no long no more. Kurt Russell turning into fucking Kentwin. You've got mail. You hear my phone doing that AOL shit? Pissing me off. You got mail. No shit, motherfucker. You said it three times. <coughs> Man, I should have put my money on this. I know I should have. The rant's already 23 and 10. Almost got a steal right there. Wow, poor pig. There you go, Jaron Jackson. Make him eat that with the rejection. He's going to be good too, Jackson is. I'm going to get off here and finish watching this game, guys, because this pissed me off. I hope I can still make my bet on Damien. I knew Jaw was going to win this where it's so close. I can maybe still make a bet.